In the world of wireless video transmission systems, there's a lot to choose from, and sometimes it can be difficult to know exactly how one system compares to another, whether it's comparing their latency and signal stability, or the app features and their price. So in this video, we thought we'd compare three of our best-selling systems in the 500 to 700 price range to see how they stack up. We've got the Holy Land Mars 4K, the Axune Cineview SE, and the Swip Curve Plus. So let's get started. I'll begin with the things that are easy to compare, starting with the price of each system. The most affordable is the Swift Curve Plus, followed by the Axune Cineview SE, and then the Holy Land Mars 4K. With resolution, they can all transmit your typical broadcast and production frame rates, which is great. They can do 1080, 24, 30, 50, and 60p. The Mars 4K, however, is the only unit here that works with 4K signals. It works up to 4K 30p over the HDMI port. They all take Sony MPF style batteries and can be powered via their DC input port. The Cineview SE and the Mars 4K also receive power via the USB-C port, which is useful. The Swift Curve Plus is the lightest unit, weighing 180 grams. The Cineview SE weighs 210 grams and the Mars 4K weighs 223 grams. Both the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K are compatible with HDMI and SDI signals, whereas the Curve Plus is HDMI only. The Cineview SE uses dual band transmission technology, which allows the devices to stream video via the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi at the same time. This helps the receiver identify interference and combine the two streams together to form a more stable transmission. The Curve Plus operates using KUWI RF technology and not Wi-Fi. It has a built-in frequency scanner that auto jumps between 5.1 and 5.9 gigahertz to the best channel for more stable and reliable transmissions. And then finally, the Mars 4K has smart channel scans that basically helps you determine which channels are occupied and selectable automatically when it turns on. Now let's go a little bit more in depth, starting out with latency. And I had a few questions going into this that I was curious about. Does cross-converting HDMI and SDI signals increase latency? What's the optimal frame rate and resolution settings for the least amount of delay? How much faster are the speed modes compared to the normal or high quality modes on the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K? And then finally, how does the latency compare hardwired into a monitor, for example, versus using their mobile apps? So we tested each unit's latency at 1080, 25, 30, and 60p using HDMI in and HDMI out. And then we also tested 4K using the Mars 4K as well. For the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K, we also tested SDI in and SDI out, HDMI in and SDI out, SDI in and HDMI out. And we found all three to be the fastest at 1080, 60p with the Mars 4K being ever so slightly faster than the Cineview SE and the Curve Plus. The Mars 4K measured 0.09 seconds of latency using SDI only in its speed mode. That was closely followed by the Curve Plus measuring 0.10 seconds using HDMI and the Cineview SE measured 0.011 seconds using SDI in its speed mode. So really close. And when converting the signal either way between HDMI and SDI, we found that the Mars 4K's latency increased by 0.03 seconds, whereas the Cineview SE remained consistent here with a reading of 0.11 seconds throughout, which is really impressive. And it also might be worth pointing out that these test results may be different in different testing environments. And within a HDMI only workflow, the Swift Curve Plus consistently had the least amount of latency across the different frame rates with the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K narrowly taking second and third place with the Cineview SE measuring 0.11 seconds and the Mars 4K measuring 0.13 seconds. So within a HDMI only workflow, the Swift is definitely the faster here. We then tested different transmission modes on the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K. There's the speed mode, a high quality mode, and a regular mode that the SE calls normal and the Mars 4K calls balance. We found the speed modes on both devices to be faster than the normal modes by 0.02 seconds for the SE and 0.03 seconds for the Mars 4K. 
The Cineview SE measured 0.03 seconds slower in HD mode compared to its speed mode, whereas the Mars 4K measured 0.06 seconds slower in HD mode compared to its speed mode. So the Axune is doing slightly better here in comparison. But the picture quality is obviously what people will care about mostly in this mode. We then set up a little scene to compare the quality of their transmission modes. We sent 108025 over their HDMI ports and recorded them all into our Ninja 5. Again, with both the Mars and the Cineview, we tested them in their speed, normal and high quality modes. And then we also tested the Curve Plus. Now, right off the bat, they all look fairly similar at first glance, which was a surprise for us. All of these in all modes look pretty great. The two standout things we noticed was that the 4K signal from the Mars is definitely the sharpest, as you'd expect, and the speed modes on the Axune and the Mars have slightly more compression than the normal and high quality modes. We also noticed the Axune has slightly more visible compression artifacts overall, which you can see on the curve of this light here, and then the SWIT has more banding on the gradients compared to the other two. So the Mars 4K does look the best quality here, but it's very close. And for a range test, we took all three systems to a nearby park area to test them out. Both the SWIT curve and the Holy Land Mars 4K are quoted for up to 150 meters line of sight, whereas the Axoon is quoted for up to 350 meters, which is quite impressive. We placed our receiver and monitor on one side of the park, and I began to walk to the other end, making sure I held the camera away from my body to prevent any line of sight issues. And while I was expecting the Axune to be the clear winner in this category, I was actually surprised by just how well the Curve did and the Mars 4K did in this test. They were both able to go over 125 meters further than their quoted 150 meters range, totaling approximately 275 meters. And in all three tests with each transmitter, I actually ran out of room in the park, which is a good sign. I then decided to place my body in between all three systems to see how they'd cope. The SWIT had the most amount of drop frames when it didn't have a clear line of sight, as you can see here. And then as soon as it had a clear line of sight again, the transmission cleared right up. Then the Mars 4K did better in this regard. There were still some drop frames when I put my body in the way, but they were far less than the SWIT curve, which is interesting to note. And then finally, the Cineview SE came out on top here. It performed the best when I blocked the line of sight of my body, and it was just a little bit more stable than the Mars 4K, which does make sense considering it's quoted for the longest range. But the key takeaway here is that none of them disconnected, even when I was 275 meters away without a clear line of sight, which is a real positive. When it comes to their design and build quality, they all feel really solid and well made. The Mars 4K has these bullet styled antenna, the Curve Plus has this much thinner and smaller design, and then the Cineview's antenna are slightly thicker and taller. So they're all sturdy in this regard, but the trade-off is that they're a little bit less adaptable compared with antenna that bend. And I'd say the simplest design is the one of the SWIT curve. It has an on-off switch and a button for pairing, but it doesn't have a screen on it or a menu like the other two. It has these three little LED lights on the side to show you that it's receiving power, that it has a video signal, and that it's linked with the other transmitter or receiver unit. The Cineview SE has a black and white interface that's simple to navigate, along with a channel selector dial on the side. The Mars 4K has a color LCD with rocker-styled button for navigating the menus. And when it comes to mounting them, as you would expect, they all have quarter-inch mounting points underneath. The Mars 4K, however, ships with this expansion accessory that screws onto the front of either unit, allowing you to mount it from the front, which is nice. When it comes to their ins and outs, both the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K are similar in that they both have HDMI and SDI in and out. They also both do cross conversion, which is nice. And this means that you can have a HDMI source coming into the transmitter and an SDI source going out of the receiver, for example. They also have USB-C ports for power delivery. The Curve Plus, on the other hand, is HDMI only in and out. But it does have loop through, which is a nice feature to have. Another thing to consider with wireless transmission systems is how versatile they are when it comes to their monitoring options. All three of these 
have additional ways of monitoring. The Curve Plus's receiver supports USB capture to a PC or a Mac computer. Once plugged in, you'll see Curve 500 Plus as a video source in programs like Microsoft Teams and Zoom, allowing you to wirelessly send in a higher quality camera feed compared to your webcam, for instance. This is also the same for programs like OBS, which is a big plus for some live streaming workflows. The Cineview SE and the Mars 4K are more versatile in this category, however, as they both have dedicated phone and tablet apps with an array of professional features like waveform monitoring, false color, and focus peaking built right in. The Cineview SE supports up to four different wireless devices at the same time via the Axune C app, and you can even monitor the feed wirelessly using M1 iMacs and laptops, which is nice. Also, with the Cineview SE and the Mars 4K, if the price for the full transmitter receiver set is too much for you, you can buy the transmitter unit on its own and connect up to four phones or tablets with the Hollyview app or the Axune C app, which I think is just great. Or with the Mars 4K, you could pair either the transmitter or the receiver separately with the Mars M1, which is a monitor with assist features as well as being either a transmitter or a receiver all in one. One thing to note though, when it comes to the amount of connected devices with the Mars 4K and the Cineview SE, is that you can only have four phones or tablets connected when you don't have a receiver connected. As soon as you connect a proper receiver, that goes down to two. And in the case of the Mars 4K, if you connect a second receiver like the Mars M1 that we just mentioned, then you can't connect any phones or tablets. But put simply, both of these offer a lot of versatility and allow you to incrementally add to your wireless system over time to suit your needs. So both are really scalable in this regard. So all in all, these three systems are great at what they do. They just do it with some slightly different feature sets. If it's 4K you're looking for, then the Hollyland is the only option for you. If you don't need SDI, but you want HDMI loop through, then the SWIT could be the right choice for you. If you like the idea of monitoring wirelessly from your Apple M1 computer, then the Axoon is the right one for you. So whether it's the price or the latency, the range or the app features, it's important to figure out what would work best in your specific workflow. And as always, if you'd like to buy any of these systems for yourself, you can head over to proav.co.uk. But do let us know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.